Clubs face a number of challenges when it comes to maintaining their membership levels. However, during this latest economic crisis, both corporate and community clubs are having to deal with the challenge of losing members due to layoffs, financial stresses, and increased demands for their time. During this presentation, we will discuss how two clubs have faced those challenges and are even thriving in our current economic climate. Like you said earlier, Richard, what is the member's goal? And then when they achieve that goal, their first, even their first, their icebreaker speech, it goes up on the chart so everyone can yes. see. And so we are very much acclimated to, because I am a very visual person, and so is Josephine, my vice president of public relations. We need to see things. And we had two members, actually we had three guests, and all three of those guests joined the following week when they came in and they came in. One of them is a dual member. The other person had been in Tokyo years ago. He can't even remember how long it's been. But this gentleman has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And to not just sit around and, and let that diagnosis overtake him, he has decided as a farmer Toastmaster to come back and rejuvenate himself through the skills that he's already learned in Toastmasters. So this is the type of, of people that we have. We have uh, another person that has been diagnosed with a very uh, uh, serious type of uh, illness that is, that is not, uh, well, I'm not a medical person, but anyway, he is combating that diagnosis also because he has joined our club, and now he's a, uh, an officer in our club. So we haven't really, really, really been affected by, the, by what's happened in the economy. We just keep doing what we know to do through the Toastmasters program that is so concise. If you continue to do what the program instructs you to do, we'll just, we just keep going and we keep going. And that's, that's how we've, even though your, your attitudes toward the members are a little bit different with how you reach them and how you keep them, even, we're, and we're still accomplishing the same thing. We're still, both of our clubs are going to be presidents distinguished. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the action plans, building relationships, and really understanding and, and adding value to your members has really created something special at Word, Wordmasters. Yes. And that mm -hmm. contacting and working with your members has made West County extra special. Obviously, we aren't mind readers, at least I'm not. <laughs> And we don't know for sure what the future will hold, but we understand that there probably will be some challenges that will be at hand going forward. What is your clubs doing to plan for the future to accommodate or to conquer any future challenges? Well, one of the things that we've paid a lot more attention to recently is mentoring. But not so much from a formal mentoring mechanism, but more of an informal meeting at St. Louis Bread Company or a local coffee shop or something like that mm -hmm. where it's you know off-duty, off-premises and everyone can be uh, somewhat comfortable and you can kick around different ideas of how to be creative or the kinds of expectations people have when you're delivering your first speeches or your tenth speeches or uh, how to go about uh, delivering that speech and setting out that writing a speech is to totally different than delivering a speech and all of that mechanism that has to happen in there because a lot of times I find that members, uh, when, when, and me, me included, you, you somehow think that you can go from here to here and there's no, it's, it's an iterative process that you have to have a little patience with, I think, <laughs> initially. So we, uh, we've been focusing on that a lot lately and it seemed to be very, very effective. I'd like to uh, add this to Richard and with your comment on mentoring. Now, the Toastmaster program suggests that when you become a member, that the Vice President of Education pairs you up with a mentor. And that mentor is to stay with you for the first three speeches. Mm. Yeah. What we've decided in our club, the officers, in, during an officer meeting, we've decided to, after those first three speeches, to assign another mentor oh. after that third speech. And that way, that person would be getting, of course, credit for their competent leader manual in one of their projects to mentor an existing member mm -hmm. also and so there would be two opportunities within that particular project in your CL manual 
but also that new member, quote, new member, not new anymore because they've already delivered three speeches from their communicate, competent communication manual, but they also have another member that is working closely with them, and that seems to have been pretty effective. All right. Great idea. Yeah, I mean, that is a great idea. We, we try to not formalize the mentoring program because mm -hmm. somehow it sets up uh, the relationship that we may or may not want, or they may not want. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's personal in the sense that you can meet with them, but not formally as I'm a mentor and you're the mentee. Yes. And mm -hmm. So that's the kind of relationship we found that people mm -hmm. don't exactly okay. respond to very well. Mm -hmm. So if you make it a little bit more informal, then it becomes uh, exactly that, and they can call you anytime, and you can mm -hmm. meet and talk and do those kinds of things. And that seems to be, uh, it works for us. We sort mm -hmm. of un underplay the, the terminology, but uh, accomplish the same task. Mm -hmm. right. And I think what you said, Dan, is the, the word, the key word to me is relationship. You have to build the relationship, not only with the person uh, that is just visiting your club to find out if this is the quote, club that they want, if it's the quote club personality that they're going to fit with, mm -hmm. but also with the mentors that, that you have for them. And it's always up to the member. Mm -hmm. It's like you said, Richard, it's not like this person is going to stick with you because right. the personalities may clash or whatever it is, but that person just comes alongside of them to be as, of assistance if they need assistance. I love that idea yeah. of, mm -hmm. of changing after N because what you don't have is a mechanism for the, Im the member to get out from under if they are not interested in participating with that assigned mentor. Mm -hmm. There's no path to go back mm -hmm. and say, I'm not interested in doing this anymore. Yeah, and to me, those, those kinds of things need to be available for people so that you can get their feedback. Something else, uh, just to interject one more thing about visitors as we make a concerted effort now, we always have contact with them after the meeting. Oh and that was just so, sort of, they would visit and they would sort of promise to come back. And, and now we definitely get their feedback and then ask what their needs are or what, if it met their expectations. And that's helped a lot with return visitors. True. Mm -hmm. Many clubs in our district struggle with membership, a draw on their time and, and financial resources. If you had one thing you would like to tell other clubs in our district, what would it be? The main thing that I would tell the clubs is to focus on the visitor. When you have a first time visitor come into your club, make sure that that visitor is welcomed and that they really, really feel welcomed. That you have all of your officers knowing exactly what their responsibilities are. That your other club members know how important it is, just like when they came first into the club, what they needed. And look at what, what they want to really do. What is their goal? Before that first time visitor leaves your meeting, ask them to stand if they're comfortable to do so. And ask them to tell us why they came to the club and how they came to the club. Whether they found us on the Toastmasters.org website, or whether they were invited personally, and then we will know why they're there, and then we will know how to service that particular individual. Well, I would say, look at your meetings. Are, are people having a great time at your meetings? What's the energy level? Are people smiling? Are they accomplishing their next, are people looking forward to speaking? Are they getting good evaluations? What is the value that your meeting offers? We, it's, it's up to the VP membership to get them in the door, to everybody to greet them, but it is the meeting itself that is going to sell them on Toastmasters, whether they want to come back, make that commitment or not. So I would say make sure your, your meetings are fun, that they stick to the Toastmasters program and provide value. One of the things that they do in our club they not, uh, in order to follow up and not to lose that person as a new member, they also ask them before they leave to tell that our club what they thought of our club. When we go to follow up then, then we already know that if they're excited about joining or not. I also believe that we should continue always to follow all of, the pro, all of what has been set by Toastmasters International, and we will succeed as long as we continue to keep that, uh, like uh, keep the rapport and keep the excitement going. Those are important. 
I would, I would express to the clubs, it, it, here's what we do. We don't overwhelm anyone when they come in the door. And we make a point of not overselling. It sells itself. So if you just let them participate in the meeting and give them the option, we, have a, we ask them to fill out a sheet with information, but we give them an option of whether they want to stand up and introduce themselves, participate in table topics, or, to, or talk at the end of the meeting. But one of the things that I found is very uh, helpful for us is that we have a, a thing called for the good of the club. And it's, it's an open mic, so to speak, so that anyone can give a, get up and uh, express their view of what they think uh, something that would be in the interest of the club and we solicit uh, feedback from the members during that session and our new people can see the kind of relationships we have that we actually are an open community club and uh, all things can be put out onto the table without uh, any recourse or condemnation <laughs> so I would uh, I would highly suggest a, a for the good of the club segment at the end of the meeting to get a, a different sort of mm -hmm. sense of how the meeting goes and what the clubs all about the challenge is clear how we choose to react will determine our success. On behalf of District 8, thank you to each of our panelists for being with us today. I hope that the information and the insight they shared will be beneficial to your club and other clubs throughout the district. For further information on building your club's membership, reaching DCP award levels, or just ways to improve the educational experience your club provides. Log on to www.toastmasters.org and discover all the materials Toastmasters has for making clubs great. If you have a question that wasn't answered by this video, or if you need additional information about the topics covered on this video, please contact the following district officers at the email addresses at the end of this video. On behalf of our panelists, I'm Dan Darnall wishing you in your club's success during the current year and the years to come. Achieve, strive, and be there for your members as you reach President's Distinguished in these tough times.